Let's look at love. Poets, philosophers, psychologists have all explored the wonders of falling in love. And now the neuroscientists have entered into this discourse, trying to understand the neurobiology of love. And what they have found is quite remarkable. So scientists advertised for people who were crazy in love, and they asked them to come and lie in the fMRI machine while they looked at a picture of their beloved. And what they found is that when they looked at a picture of their lover, the crazy in love people, their brains lit up as if they were on cocaine. The reward centers of their brain were highly active. At the same time, the critical judgmental part of the brain went quiet. So love is blind. We look at our lover with rose-colored glasses. This is all seen now and understood now in terms of what's going on in our brain. But alas, somewhere down the line, the magic spell of love fades. We wake up to reality and we see our partner warts and all. The critical judgmental parts of our brain come back online. This happens around a year to a year and a half into a relationship. So that's about how long romantic passion lasts. And then love turns into, if we continue in the same relationship, turns into a, a tamer version called companionate love. But even companionate love, both companionate love and romantic love decline over time. The somewhat grim uh, data is that marital satisfaction declines over time. This is made worse by stress and it's also made worse by having children, which by definition is stressful. Um, by the way, when I say marriage, I really mean relationships, intense, intimate relationships. Um, I want to include couples who are not married and include gay and lesbian couples who are or aren't married at this point in history. Um, but most of the research has been done on married couples, so that I'm using the, the terms interchangeably. Madly in love is a delicious state. I remember when I first fell in love with my husband. I remember what I was wearing, where we were standing. It was a cold February day with snow all around us. I remember the coat and the hat I was wearing. I remember his beautiful deep eyes and I fell into the pool of his eyes. At that point, I saw him and me in technicolor and everyone else around us, all my friends, all my family were in black and white, literally. That's how intense the feeling was. So what are the chemicals of crazy in love? Well, for starters, we of course have testosterone, which gets our lust going. That's really important. But in addition, dopamine and norepinephrine are very active, focusing us on this deliciousness of this one particular person. And oxytocin is a major player in love. So let me talk a little bit about oxytocin. Oxytocin bonds lovers in much the same way as it bonds mothers and babies and fathers and babies. Neuroscientists have studied oxytocin. Oxytocin is released with sex, with orgasm, with birth, giving birth, with nursing. It's sort of like first comes love, then comes marriage, then comes the baby carriage. <laughs> and then empathy, massage, gentle touch, all release oxytocin. It's really the bonding chemical. Oxytocin also lowers cortisol, which is the stress hormone. So throughout the neuroscience literature, oxytocin is a major player. I wanna talk for a moment about some rodents in the Midwest called prairie voles. Prairie voles are the darlings of neuroscience. These critters mate for life, and when one dies, the other often doesn't find a new partner. What is it about the prairie voles that allows them to have monogamous relationships when so many other animals do not have monogamy? What scientists have found is that for prairie voles, their oxytocin and vasopressin receptors, which is related to oxytocin, are in the reward centers of their brain. So for these critters, it feels good to bond. Monogamy is difficult to maintain over the long haul, especially over the long haul of a human relationship. Most animals are not monogamous, and even the prairie voles that are monogamous are socially monogamous. They're not sexually monogamous, so they may have a fling on the side. And they've even found that birds who are quote-unquote monogamous are cheating on the side. So the difficulties human beings have with monogamy and with fidelity is actually uh, shared with, is a, is a problem that is shared with many other animals in the, in the animal kingdom.